Hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, oh, man, it's another day, it's another Chelsea-Liverpool game, it's another draw, I mean, it's, it's, it's annoying, but we're going to start off on a positive, because let's be honest, yeah, compared to last season, that was much better, <laughs> so look, um, it's, it's not all doom and gloom, um, and there are definitely things to analyse for good and for bad, but before we do, and we get cracking into this first match review of the season on Eunice Talks Football, I am going to tell you guys to make sure that you are going to keep up to date with all the uploads. You have to do two things, which is hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded as well. On top of that, do not forget to follow all the socials, my personal socials, Insta, Twitter and TikTok, as well as the Eunice Talks Football socials for Insta, Twitter and TikTok are all in the description as well as on screen for you right now. So make sure you guys are hitting the follow and enjoy. Chelsea won, Liverpool won, and it could have been different, and it could have been different for both teams. Let's be honest, let's be honest. Liverpool um, could have really got themselves ahead in the first half an hour of the game by a considerable margin if they'd been really clinical. Chelsea started off pretty poor, and um, I don't know if that was PTSD from last season. I don't know if we were still in the vibes of last season. You know, you walk out into Stamford Bridge like, oh my God, we're here again. Oh no. And then all of a sudden, they start to get into their rhythm. But on the back of that, we did end up going 1-0 down. And 1-0 down through a, yeah, poor defending, if I'm honest. But a fantastic pass from Mo Salah. Fantastic, exquisite, to a T, in order to carry that much weight on a pass right into the path of uh, Diogo Jota. Was it Diogo Jota? It was Diogo Jota. Um, but the one thing that surprised me when we did let in that goal was the fact that we set up in a certain way. No, Luis Diaz, not, not Jota, my bad. Luis Diaz on the end of that after he stretched out in order to tap it into the bottom corner. What surprised me was the amount of space that we were actually letting Liverpool have in defence whilst we set up in a 3 5 2. I was shocked when I saw the lineup. I didn't quite get it. I was thinking, what? I mean, let me rephrase. I kind of understood why Potts went with the 3 5 2. At the same time, the personnel that he selected was where I was like, hmm, okay. Why did I kind of get what he was trying to do with the 3-5-2 is because Liverpool have a very dangerous attack. On top of that, you know that if you give them too much space, they're going to punish you. At the same time, our attack is, I think, our best attribute at the moment. However, Liverpool's defence is extremely open. And if we set up ourselves in a way where we can hold our defence and be tight, not allow their attack to function, but have the ability to launch a counter-attack, we should have the advantage over Liverpool. I don't know if that was the thinking behind Pochettino's uh, system and the formation he went with. I'm guessing that was it. But, weirdly enough, Chelsea was still exposed at the back. And this is where I was, I was shocked. De Sassi at right centre-back was all over the place. Colwell at left centre-back was allowing Salah to cut in way too much. And it was, it was open. It was, it was very, very open. Hence, Salah getting the ball into Luis Diaz's paths, and it's 1-0. And I'm thinking, oh my god, here we go again. Here we go again. And then the same thing happens again. Salah gets the space, runs inside, 2-0. And I'm like, what on earth is going on? Are we really doing this again, Chelsea? Are we back to last season? Come on. Thankfully, it's disallowed. It's disallowed, and I'm like, okay, that's a wake-up call. That is a big, big, big wake-up call. We have what it takes to come back into the game. I wasn't worried. I had the feeling we will score. Don't worry, it'll be okay. But we are allowing Liverpool way too much space, which then brings me back to the formation and the system. I went with, in my preview, if you had seen it, a back four, a 4 2 three, one, how we played in pre-season, and let's roll with that. I have to say, though, is Potter's thinking kind of half correct? Because if we went to a back four, would we have allowed ourselves to attack more? Or would we have given more space to Liverpool and probably let him three or four? That's where I can't answer. And that's something we'll never know. We won't find out. Maybe we would have been absolutely obliterated if we played in the back four. Or maybe we would have controlled the game more, had more of the ball and therefore put Liverpool on the back foot. It could have gone either way. So I, I get, mate, I, to an extent, I get Poch's logic, but there are certain personnel that I would have definitely had different in terms of the way that we set up starting in the first half before we get into the second half. Thankfully, 
we managed to go in um, at the break 1-1. And that was De Sassi, The guy that I just said was having a horror show at right centre-back. And he comes in clutch. Ben Chilwell, um, into, well, it, ben Chilwell into the box. And then he lands the, the, to De Sassi. He taps it in, bobbles into the bottom corner. And he scores on his debut. So huge congratulations to De Sassi for scoring on his debut. His first game for Chelsea and his first game at Stamford Bridge. Fantastic. One minute later... We had absolutely exquisite champagne football going on. Absolutely wonderful. And Ben Chilwell gets himself around the goalkeeper, slots it in, and it's 2-1 in the space of a flash. Not even a minute, a flash. All of a sudden, we're losing 1-0, boom, it's, we're winning 2-1. It's offside. And it was offside. All the offside decisions today were absolutely correct. So fair play to the linesman, fair play to VAR. They got it spot on. Um, and we go in at 1-1. Second half, I had it in my head that, all right, look, we didn't start with Mudrik. I understand maybe why we didn't start with Mudrik, because we had wing backs and we had the two up top, Jackson and Sterling. I get it. Matson at the same time, didn't start. Santos didn't start because we had Gallagher alongside Enzo. Fair play, I get it. Okay. But going into the second half, I had it in my head. If Liverpool are not winning by the 60th minute, and I, I tweeted this as well, uh, or, or I X'd it. I don't know how to say, what do you say? How do you, what do you call a tweet now if Twitter's not Twitter anymore? <laughs> as a side note, that's a different story for a different day. But I said, by 60 minutes, if Liverpool are not winning, they're finished. Because we'll bring on Mudrik and he'll have impact. Now, we waited till the 78th minute, I think, to bring on Mudrik. So I've, that's one thing that I would have done differently. Personally, I understand maybe in the context of now the Premier League is allowing more time to be added on in injury time because of the time wasted during the game. I get that. So we're no longer going to see three or four minutes stoppage time. We'll, we'll start hitting 10 minutes and 11 minutes and all that madness. Although today we only got five at the end because there wasn't much time wasting. So that's something to bear in mind. So 78th minute all the way to the 95th minute. Yeah, just under 20 minutes. Maybe just about enough time to get a winner, which we nearly did. But... I would have liked to see Mudrik come on earlier. And why? Because he had to come on for Sterling. He had to come on for Sterling. Man. Sterling, look, Sterling had a couple of good moments and a load of bad moments. You know, a couple of good moments of link up and great, all right, fantastic. The rest is him going straight into trouble, losing the ball, passing it out. But I don't get him. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. This is why I have, there's a side of me that thinks, look, if we had taken the risk... We could have lost the game, but at the same time, we probably would have won the game too. What do I mean by that? If we had gone to our 4-2-3-1, if we had gone to two wingers, Jackson up top, Mudrik, um, Matson perhaps. You know, he came on for Chukwameka in the middle and he looked good as well for the time that he was on the pitch. Um, maybe we would have salvaged something. Maybe we would have actually got something done. Um, but it's difficult. Why? Because Liverpool's attack was so dangerous. I personally, personally, and I, I, I stick to this, I would have taken the risk the moment Mo Salah was taken off. I don't understand what Klopp was doing when he took Mo Salah off. I understand Salah's frustration. He was fuming when he came off. He started taking off his bandages and throwing it on the pitch. I was like, hang on, Mo, listen, don't litter. You know, <laughs> I understand you're going to throw your bandages away, but take it with you and put it in the bin. I mean, you know, there's no need to just throw it all on the pitch. What's that about? You know, and if we were playing in Hackney Marshes, I'd understand, but come on, you know. Um, so the moment that happened, because for me, Salah was their most threatening player. Absolutely. Salah, Jota, Diaz did play well overall, but Salah was just, the moment he got the ball, electric, didn't really set a foot wrong. He got taken off. That's where I thought, you know what? We can take the risk now. Go to a back four. Reese James came off. Gusto came on. Oh, hopefully that's not, that, I, I swear, I, that better not be an injury. I, I, he, he, was, he was holding his knee and I saw him holding his knee and I'm like, no, not again, not again. I'm not doing this again. Now, this is why we got Gusto for this very moment. But Reese, I swear his knee better be okay. It better be okay. If it's his knee, I'm going to flip. Because this knee is made out of cheese. If, if, it's, if it's his knee, it's made out of cheese. But I hope he's okay and I hope it's a precaution. Gusto comes on. But later on, we take off Chilwell. We bring on Ugo Chuku. You know, so I'm thinking, okay, if, look, if Salah's come off, right, we're making those sort of moves, go to a back four, go to two wingers, 
get some help for, 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 for Jackson up there and let's pile the pressure on because Liverpool have taken off their most threatening player. So their attack has automatically been, been, been weakened a little bit. Although Nunes did get himself into good spaces when he came on. But I felt that was the moment possibly to take the risk. Hence, even at the end, with Mudrik, we almost scored the winning goal in the final minute. We almost. And you're thinking, yeah, maybe he should be putting that away. His touch was a bit too heavy. Jackson on the rebound. <sighs> we could have won today. We really, really could have won today. We could have won today. So, look, I don't know what to think in terms of should we have taken that risk to go to a back four and add some attacking power to aid Jackson or doing that, would that have threatened us? Would that have left us exposed as the back? Would that have left us, would, would that have left us open, you know, and laying out the red carpet for Liverpool's deadly attack to go and score more goals like they could have done in that first half? It's hard to dictate what way it would have gone. It's really hard. So when you look at it from that aspect, is a draw fair? Is it deserved? Yeah, yeah. I would say a draw is a fair result for both. But it was there. I feel like it was there. Their defence was there for the taking. I want to say, though, in terms of the players that did play, Jackson today, he didn't score, but you can see the difference, man. You can see the difference between him and, say, a Kai Havertz up top, what we used to have. And it, we actually have a striker that moves and operates like a striker. You know, do you know what I mean? Some moments that he could have done better. There was one ball that came in from, a, was it a Reese James cross? It was a, a Sterling low ball into the box. I'm not sure. And he goes in to, to, to tap it into the net just over the bar but he gets himself into great positions he's always ahead of the defenders he's strong and solid even though tech when you look at him you'd, you'd think like a van dyke would have power over him but jackson's able to just nah i'm getting the ball and he always does fair play to him his link up and tight control in tight spaces is phenomenal hardly loses the ball and that's key for me that is absolutely key but yeah where should this have been taken in terms of Poch's uh, moves in terms of the game, in terms of the way that he read it? Should we have gone to a back four? Should we have brought on Mudrik, maybe Matson as well earlier? Should we have played Santos in the middle? One other thing in terms of the midfield and allowing Liverpool too much space was the fact that when Enzo did move forward, Gallagher was just by himself operating as a single DM. And we can't be doing that. We can't be doing that, man. That's, this is where we need Caicedo. <laughs> we absolutely need Caicedo. And for that matter, Lavia as well. Because bringing in Lavia will have enough depth and quality in that whole midfield to do whatever we want. In any system, when you have Enzo, Caicedo and Lavia, you can operate in a double pivot, in a midfield three, one laying back as a DM, one going forward, two going forward. You can do whatever the hell you want. So that's flexibility that we absolutely need with the way that we're trying to play our football. And we were playing really good portions of football today. Fantastic. They were, as I said, started off slow, but later on, we really sped things up. At times, we were playing liquid football, tight space, what tight passing, quick moving, really nice, precise, direct football. And it's, it's, it's really nice to see after what we went through last season. It gives me optimism in terms of how to move forward now. But yeah, could we have gotten three points? absolutely and that's why I'm a little bit mm, I'm, 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 I'm happy but I, I could be happier <laughs> I could be happier so that's uh, the question I'm going to leave you with was is overall I know great performance um, much better than what we saw last season brilliant patterns of play brilliant performances from some of the players on the pitch today overall very happy as a first time with this new look Chelsea Pochettino I can't complain but could we have won it? And the question I want to leave with you is, would you have taken the risk? Would you have gone to a back four earlier? Would you have brought on Mudrik and Matson earlier, perhaps? Or would you have stuck with Sterling? Would you have stuck with the back five? What would you have done in order to try and get those three points? Do you think what Pod's done was actually correct to just ride it through? Hence, at the very end, we probably did have the opportunity to nick it, like I said. And if we had done that, I'd be on here screaming to the top of the rooftops that we've done a tremendous job and we've nicked the win. So... <laughs> You know, you can look at it from, from one way or another. Let me know what you would have done. Much appreciated. And the 1-1 one, one draw, at the end of the day, probably a fair result. But the battle's not over. Why? You know, it's a draw. But if we just get that Kaiseido, here we go. Technically, we've won. So, um, look, Fabrizio, feed us that here we go. 
<laughs> but listen, if we get, here we go, if we get big news, you will be getting a second video tonight, so keep your eyes peeled. If there's nothing happening, then I'm probably going to leave it at this for today, but if there is going to be developments that happen tonight, you will get a second video tonight, so we'll keep our eyes on that. I might be back later, I might not, so let's see what happens, and if I am, I'll see you later. If I'm not, I'll see you tomorrow, but Make sure to keep up to date and to know when I've uploaded, you're doing the most crucial thing, which is to make sure that you are subscribed, you hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded, so you know, and you'll be here, just in case we get the big news. And make sure you're following me on the socials to keep up to date with anything that I suggest, my thoughts and opinions, as well as all things Unis Talks Football. Make sure you're following them. Links are in the description as well as on screen for you right now. My personal Instagram, my Eunice Talks Football Instagram, and the same goes for Twitter and the same goes for TikTok. So much appreciated, people. Let me know your thoughts overall in the comment section below, and I will see all of you later, perhaps with the big, big news, or tomorrow, and we're going to get it then anyway. So I'll see all of you very, very soon. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one, people, in a bit. Take care, and peace.